I would like to share a story of a, a personal family tragedy and the power of neighbors who restored love with their compassion. April 15, 2013 was a sad day for my family. Two of my cousins, Celeste and her daughter, Sydney Cochran, faced evil and hatred and violence when Celeste and Sydney became victims of the Boston bombing. Celeste lost both a part of her legs, one leg right above the knee, the other right below, and her daughter, Sydney, nearly lost her life. They and our family that day dealt with the unimaginable. The horrible event of that day and week filled all of our lives with so many emotions, worry and concern and anger and sadness and a heart-stopping numbness as they and we as a family struggled through this. Fortunately, we have a very large and loving French, Italian, and Irish family. And the grace and the love of all that, plus the love and support of strangers, good Samaritans, made it all a little bit more bearable. At the bomb scene, for example, two strangers came to attend to Sydney's pain to stop her life-threatening bleeding as they offered words and actions filled with comfort and with care. Complete strangers offered and continued to offer for months afterward financial assistance for their vast medical needs. Medical care workers supported and healed them. In one instance, United States Marines visited Celeste and Sydney, Marines who had also lost their limbs fighting in the Iraqi or Afghan wars. And one Marine, while he was giving them both words of comfort, raised his hands over Celeste's missing limbs in a gesture that was both blessing and anointing, and said to her, well, this, this is just a change of scenery. A change of scenery. Some days don't we all need a change of scenery. Abram, from our first reading in the story that we all know, and his wife Sarah, well, in their old age, they yearned for a child. And as such, they searched for a change of scenery in the barrenness that was their life. Abram, after a period of unbelief in God's promises that he and Sarah could ever conceive, had a child instead with Sarah's maidservant, Hagar. Abram and Sarah now lived the life unimaginable. Yet Abram saw God's promises reestablished, a promise of land and prosperity and future generations born of his love for Sarah, promises of their own child, and then promises reestablished once again after Abram's display of trust in the attempted sacrifice of his own son, Isaac. And with that covenantal trust restored, Abram, now Abraham, lived his life with this unflinching belief that God was with him in all things, no matter what. He went forth, as we just heard in our first reading from Genesis, away from the home that he knew. And Abraham, filled with faith and God's love, found God abundantly blessing his life and love as an honored figure of countless generations and as the forefather of Jesus. Abraham's life was transfigured by his belief that with God, there is a light that never goes out. So in our gospel this day, the apostles, as they experienced Jesus' transfiguration, they too faced a change of scenery. As we live our Lent year after year, we know Jesus' passion story very, very well. For soon Jesus is going to be put to death, crucified. The apostles and all of his followers and all who profess to believe because of this crucifixion are going to have their faith tested. Who hasn't had their faith tested? They are about to go through the unimaginable. Yet in scripture, in the passage right before our gospel of transfiguration that we just heard tonight, we discover St. Peter's famous statement of belief that Jesus is the Christ, 
the Son of the living God. And so the apostles believe and their lives are transfigured, changed because of their belief. And Jesus, as the covenant fulfillment, transfigures their lives, transfigures our lives as well, changes the scenery of our lives and fills it like Abraham's with blessing, with every blessing, despite all the unimaginable things each one of us go through. Our life is filled, really, with blessing. Yet we can, in the choices that we make in life, choose wrongly and fail and sin. And so often because of that, we become life-forgetting and God-forgetting and love-forgetting people. Jesus teaches us by his love, by his transfiguration, by his light of love for us, a light that never goes out, that there are times each one of us needs to be transfigured. And if there's any time for transfiguration, it's Lent. Life becomes unimaginable when we choose to forgive or not to forgive and forget to act with mercy and to give the gift of a love divine. When we forget to do those things, we make our life and other people's lives unimaginable. And so doing, we consciously or unconsciously allow hatred then to have a life in our world, in our hearts and in our streets. A miserable life indeed in need of a change of scenery. Our world and our communities and sometimes the very lives we are living need a change of scenery. We need hope. We need to feel we're forgiven. We need to feel we are loved so that we can be the light of love. We have refugees ripped from their homes with no place to rest their head, no refuge, and they need a change of scenery. The global reality surrounding the pandemic among us and the threat of future pandemics with the panic and the reality of people we know who have suffered or who have died because of this virus speak of a need for a change in scenery, one of care and cure, one of healing and hope. The systemic violence and hatred among ordinary people from our very neighbors or from governments or global political tribalism offer a hatred that alienates and divides and destroys. Violence and hatred alive in wars and oppression such as between Russia and the Ukraine and Syria from Mexican cartels or domestic and foreign terrorism. Or hatred and violence between cultures of difference found in the genocidal reality found in some African countries, such as happened in Rwanda, and that still is such a very destructive force in our world and in Africa. And finally, hatred and violence, too often sadly in our own streets and mass shootings that happen here in Omaha and so many other places in our country. All these examples of hatred and violence and terror cause us as people to suffer through the unimaginable. And for me, well, just because I have Reverend in front of my name and the SJ Jesuit initials after doesn't mean that my faith and spirituality is always ascended to some state of blissful nirvana. It's not. Sure, I very often feel God's love deeply for me when Things in life are going well when relationships are filled with kindness and with care. The sun is shining and where divinity seems to flow through every good thing. Yet I too can also be God forgetting, Christ forgetting, divine love forgetting when chaste loneliness sets in, when ministry or religious life doesn't modify and exemplify the Christian charity or God's justice and mercy when encounters with evil and hatred and violence bring injury, when I am or the ones that I love are hurt and suffering, like Celeste and like Sydney. Well, it's easy during those times to look up to the heavens, to look somehow somewhere outside of myself to something not written in my heart, to find my own faith tested and say, God, where is your love? And so I hear Abraham and Peter and Jesus calling out to me and calling out to each one of us to change the scenery of our lives. 
to change our hearts, to change the scenery of our communities, to change the scenery of our world by imagining something different. Their witness and their lives pierce our hearts as there is in truth the reality of grace upon grace upon grace that is too powerful to name if we only believe and tap into it. So the grace that Paul speaks of in the letter to St. Timothy speaks of a Jesus who, by his sacrificial life and love, reveals the grace of a shining divine light of love, a light of love that never, ever goes out. That's why we're here tonight, right? Jesus asks, can you imagine forgiveness? Can you imagine mercy? Can you imagine loving kindness? Can you imagine reconciliation? How many of us need reconciliation with those we love and with our God? This change of scenery, the only thing that's really going to transfigure our lives and the lives of our sisters and brothers and the life of our world then is Jesus. Only Jesus and his healing love for us all, despite what may be happening in our life and what may be happening in our world. The choice to believe in the healing love of God and Jesus or not is mine and is ours always to make, to believe or not to believe. It's our choice. And as I look back on Celeste and Sydney's journey, on my own journey and need for healing, well, I know now that the only true and real healing, the only real good and positive, holy and transfiguring change comes from a faith and a higher power. For I've come to believe for me and for all of us that the truth for me is God's goodness. And it's found in Jesus' divine love and healing presence. A, feel, a healing presence found alive as well in the Christ-like hands of hearts of so many caring neighbors love. So as divine love graces our lives, as we believe, as we live out this divine love, indeed the light of God's love will never go out. It will never diminish. These moments of divine love alive then should shake us up and should break us and break down any barriers that keep the law of God's love from resting in our hearts and from piercing our hearts. And when this happens, when love pierces our hearts, each person on this planet gets that it's about love and divine love after all. Well, thanks be to God for this. For this indeed will be good news. So as we choose to live in faith, we too are taken up. We too are trans transfigured in the holiness of this Christ who loves us and who is always with us. Yes, there is this light that never goes out in this Jesus alive in this place, St. Francis Cabrini, alive in one another, alive in this our common table, and in the Christ that rests in our hearts. A divine and healing love whose reign always, 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 if we can only believe it and imagine it, is forever changing the scenery of our own lives with the power of faith's never-ending hope. <laughs>